Hello, everyone. Um, thank you all for joining our admissions webinar. I uh, would like to welcome everyone who's present. Um, hi, okay, see that the, light, the chat is uh, starting off. Um, uh, you know, just some instructions before we begin. We let some, uh, you know, we'll begin the next uh, couple of minutes, but some instructions and the user flow kind of build in. So I would request you, you know, since this is an admissions webinar and we've kept it extremely customized to the people who are completing their applications right now or are you know thinking about starting their application at Vedika, we'd encourage you to we'd encourage you to you know use the live chat feature on the right hand side as we currently are doing and ask as many questions as possible, you know, whether it's uh, about your application, whether it's about the admissions process, whether it's about uh, you know, navigating the process, what you can expect in the interview. So, you know, all of your doubts about Vedika will be answered through this live stream. So I'm again encouraging you to make it as you know, interactive as possible. Use the chat feature on the right. And uh, yeah, I hope we have uh, a good hour, uh, you know, that we can spend talking about the Vedika admission process. Uh, for everyone who's not begun and who's just joining the chat, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline uh, some of the steps that you you know take from the starting point till the end point uh, of admissions. So how does this work? So number one, if you're interested in applying to Vedika and want to be a scholar, what you do is you go to the Vedika website. That's www.vedikascholars.com. On the top right hand side, you see a flag there that says apply now, or you can click on the register page. It'll take you to the registration page. Now in the registration page, we ask you for some basic details, which include your name, which include um, your email, your mobile phone number for verification purposes. And uh, you know, over there, once you submit your details, when you click submit, uh, you know, we'll have your details in our backend and our program will then generate a unique VS ID and a password for you. So what you do is you sit back, you wait for about 15 minutes to about half an hour, and then you should receive an email in that email ID that you registered with. You'll get an email uh, with your VS ID, which is your Vedika Scholars ID, and your password that you had chosen. So you'll get a VS ID and password. What you do then is either click the link that's given in that email, which will redirect you to the application form, or what you can do is go back to the homepage, www.vedikascholars.com, there will be a section there on the top right which says apply. You click on apply, and that'll take you to our application form. So you take those details that you've got on the email, which is your VS ID, and it will be your password. You enter them, and then you'll be put into the application form. So when you're in the application form, we're asking you some basic things. We're asking you your personal information, which includes details about, uh, you know, say your hometown, your address. Uh, personal details. Then we're asking you about um, the family details. Uh, then we'll move on to asking you about educational details. So your class 10, class 12, your undergraduate experience. Uh, there's an option to add master's experience if you have a master's degree as well. Uh, then our next section asks you about your professional experience. So any work experience you have either as an internship or as a full-time employee somewhere, we encourage you to put it here. So that's that section. Finally, we have a new section that we've incorporated in our application called the psychometric question section. Uh, there's a series of multiple choice question and answer format that's given there. Uh, you know, you feel free to choose the answers which fit your personality the most. Of course, there's nothing right or wrong there. There's no, uh, you know, gray, it's completely gray area. So you choose either of these options and move on. At the end, there's a references section. Uh, references section is optional. So, you know, what you can do is if you're not able to arrange a reference to provide us during the time of submitting your application, we'll ask you to get your reference at the time of your interview. So that references section is optional as is indicated in the website and in the application form itself. Towards the end, there's a simple declaration. And uh, towards the end, uh, there is, uh, you know, asking you to upload your uh, photo and CV. Uh, I think there's a question here that says, I'm not able to upload my CV. Uh, the CV has to be uploaded in PDF format. So I hope you're using uh, a PDF format, which is specified there as well. 
So I hope you're using a PDF format to uh, upload your resume uh, and resume or CV, and hopefully that should be solved for you then. Um, okay, if you tried the PDF format, Kashish, what you can do is just email us at info at vedikascholars.com, and our developers will upload it from the back end for you, right? And uh, I guess another question has come in. I'll take right now is will every applicant get a call? Uh, no, uh, Sanyukta. What happens is that we go through a screening process. So I'm just coming to this. I had reached the end of completing the application form. So personal details, uh, work experience, uh, you know, uh, psychometric section, and the rest of the details. As you keep completing these, as you click on save and move on to the next section, you'll see a bar on the top of your application form. Uh, what it says is, um, you know, it'll complete from 0, 10, 50, 100 percent. So once your application is complete, that bar will be marked in green and will show you 100 percent complete. So that's when you know and you're confident that your application is 100 percent complete and submitted. What happens after that is your application goes through a screening process. So uh, the admissions team screens the applications. We have get a large volume of applications which we screen through. Uh, a certain set of parameters and rubrics that the admission team has. And then the ones that qualify that stage get a call for an interview. And as everyone knows, in this day and age, uh, no one is stepping outside their homes. So what you can do is, uh, you know, we'll be having video interviews with uh, the applicants that are chosen for this stage. So once the video interviews are conducted, and if you qualify those video interviews, then you are given a Vedika offer. So that's the point at which you're granted admission. So it's right from the start of the process till the point of granted admission. If anyone has any queries on this process, you know how to prepare for the interview, all of these kind of things, like right now is the perfect time for you to be asking these. Uh, okay, we're getting some more questions. Um, I completed my application on Tuesday. When can I expect an acknowledgement about the status of my application, about the interview call? So, Shubhra, uh, you should get a call from the admissions team within one to two weeks of the submission of your application. Uh, it can be earlier, it can be later. It's, uh, you know, just give it a time for uh, one to two weeks over there. So, yeah. Uh, right. So, you know, uh, uh, the, we've also uploaded a video on how to complete the Vedika application. So for everyone who's not done it, or everyone who wants a step-by-step -step, uh, kind of, you know, uh, let's say like a screen flow video in which there's a model application being filled and you can just follow in those same steps, uh, please, you know, uh, have a look at uh, this video that's been linked in the chat over here. Right, so um, how to prepare for the Vedika interview. Right, Priyanka, so the Vedika interview is quite different to the other interviews you might encounter. As we mentioned on our website, we look for potential and not for performance. What that means is that we're not meticulous about your CAT score, GMAT score, GRC score, uh, you know, even the, our academics, we are not looking for people who, you know, obviously will encourage and appreciate people who have performed academically because they need to cope up with the rigor of the program, but that's not kept at the focus of the interview. Uh, what we keep at the focus of your interview is, uh, you know, your personality and your ambition. So what we're looking for is uh, respectfulness, resilience, authenticity to your personality, to your profile that you mentioned in your application form, people who are ambitious. So that's something that I, you know, clearly see that is um, some of the top qualities that we're looking for in our students, uh, you know, at Vedika is that they have that drive, they have that resilience, they have that ambition of wanting to improve their lives and succeed and make it big in their corporate careers, corporate social development sector career. I mean, one of the biggest uh, starting points for Vedika was, you know, trying to amend the gender disparity that's currently present at, in the workplace. So I don't know if people watching this are familiar, there's been a lot of women that have dropped out of the workforce over the last 15 to 20 years in India. I mean, right from the contribution of women to the percentage of GDP, ours is about 17 to 20 percent as compared to China, which is at 40 to 40 to 45 percent. Uh, you know, in terms of the women dropping out, we had literally the size of Australia being removed from our workforce. That's 24, 25 million Indian women that have left the workforce in the last 20 years. 
So we're looking for women who have that drive, who have that resilience, and who do not want to quit. Again, the emphasis on is on, is on building sustained careers of excellence. And sustained is a really important part of that you know, equation. You want your careers to be long. You want you not to quit. So yeah, hope that answers your question. All right. So uh, when the when interview will be conducted? So I hope uh, you know it depends. As I mentioned on the you know I've mentioned before, if you've completed your application, if you've submitted it, and it's if it's screened for you know screened successfully, uh, only then will you be called for your interview. After you've submitted your application, it takes about one to two weeks for you to be you know, screened, and then we'll call you for your interview in this amount of time. So you know, hope that answers your question. Um, Ravisha is asking, is internship also counted in professional experience or just a full-time experience? So you know, we'd encourage you to put your internship experience there. There's a bar in which you can select the internship options for us to know, you know uh, whether your experience is part time full time or as an entrepreneur so you know uh, or or as an intern sorry so you know that uh, just any kind of work experience you have will be better for us you know please mention it because it'd be better for us to evaluate your profile so i would encourage you to put internship experiences that you had as a part of your work experience section over there we definitely do know the difference on our internally, we know the difference between a full-time experience and an internship experience. All right. Um, if my application is not selected, will I be informed about it? As I submitted my form on 10th May, but not received any further information. Yeah, as I just mentioned, Shubhi, uh, you know, it takes one to two weeks for the admissions team to get back to you. Uh, yes, you will be informed if your if your application is not screened and it's not made it to the next round. Uh, and you will be informed if your application has been selected and made it to the next round. So. If I think I guess it's like the 14th, it's been a week, so just give it, uh, you know, a couple of more days, should be, and then uh, we should be reaching out to you. The admissions team should be reaching out to you with their decision. Uh, we'd encourage you to stay prepared for the interview. The interview, as I mentioned, will happen virtually, so it'll be a video call that happens using, you know, any one of the popular video platforms. All those instructions will be communicated accordingly. Right. Um, I am unable to pay the fees. Will I be eligible for scholarship? Right. So, uh, you know, what I've mentioned is, um, or, you know, how about the, the Vedika website, what it mentions is two aspects to support yourself financially. So let me cover both of them first before I move on to the next questions. The first aspect is financial aid, which is taking an educational loan with some of our loan partners. Now, I know that, you know, you can approach your preferred bank, the bank that you have an account with, but, you know, because of the health pandemic that's going on, a lot of banks are operating very slowly and at limited capacity. So we'd really encourage for you to partner with our financial partners. Uh, we have Credence, we have Access Bank as our financial partners. Credence is an NBFC that helps connect you to different education lending facilities and customize your own product. So when you come, you know, to us, uh, you know, you can connect you to Credence, have a let's say, a, you know, a customized educational product. And with Access Bank, it's more of a fixed educational product that you can opt for. So again, uh, you, you know, you come with uh, come to us for this financial aid. We'll connect you with those partners. Accordingly, you can you know make uh, tie up with our POCs there and help yourself uh, get the educational loan that you require. Now, some numbers about the educational loan. Let me just put it into perspective. I hope everyone on this chat knows this term called return on investment, right? Because that's going to be important here. So if you look at the fees that Vedika charges, which is 10.6 lakhs plus GST. So if you 18% GST, if you calculate on 10.6 lakhs, that amounts to be about 12 lakhs, right? So 12 lakhs for the 18 months experiences. And this 12 lakh covers everything from the tuition fee to the hostel, to your food, to any travel expenses that you know, we take you out for personally. So it's an all inclusive fee. So that's uh, 12 lakhs for the 18 months. Now, if you calculate this annually, right, take that 18 months and bring it in 12 months. So what do you see there? You see that for 12 months, this fee gets cut down to about eight, 7.75 to 8 lakhs, right? So 8 lakhs for 12 months is what you're paying for the Vedika educational experience. If you look at the average salary that students get 
after they graduate, which is 10.2 lakhs. So you compare 10.2 lakhs and you compare 8 lakhs, which is 8 lakhs annually as the fee, 10.2 lakhs annually as your salary. So it's greater than 100% return on investment. So for students who are taking loans, for students who have come and you know have gone through our educational partners who understand the ethos and the Vedika program extremely well, we sort of them starting to work. So you know that's something that we really encourage that students don't be bound by, uh, you know, students don't be bound by things, uh, financial burdens, or students aren't bound by their debt. So that's something you know we've seen is has a greater ROI and has helped a lot of the students in the past. The second thing which is uh, you know the aspect of scholarships we've mentioned on our website that uh, scholarships are awarded on the basis of need merit and diversity so let me go through each one of them for you so let me go through need first so need based aid what does that mean so need based scholarships we actually ask for your financial background from your family what that means is you'll have to submit your income tax returns right so income tax returns of your entire family will have to assess, for example, you know, what the financial background of your family is for a particular financial year. Accordingly, we'll be able to ascertain, and by we, I mean the scholarship committee that sits and grants scholarship, will be able to ascertain if you require need-based aid or not. So this need-based aid is again given in the brackets of, you know, say 20%, 25%, 50%, 75%. And, you know, that's something that's taken into account there. Second thing is your merit based scholarships. Merit based scholarships are, you know, regular scholarships that you see all around you, which are awarded to students who have performed well, say, academically or in their co curricular activities or, you know, they say in debates or MUNs, for example. So, you know, that's something that we like to reward our students with. And, you know, students have performed exceptionally well in these aspects are rewarded a merit-based scholarship. And finally is the scholarship on the basis of diversity. So what does that mean? Diversity is for us, you know, for the admissions team that is composing a cohort of Vedika scholars. We want students who are bringing in value. We want students who have non-traditional backgrounds, who are from non-traditional geographies, from professional experiences, from non-traditional educational backgrounds. So if we feel that students coming in, you know, are say left of center, um, we see that, you know, they add a lot of value by being in the cohort. So that's something that is an, is a, you know, a diversity based scholarship, which is again, you know, something much more internal rather than external. And, uh, you know, a very big, big rule I'd like to just clarify right now, say you get selected, right? What that means is application is screened. Second thing is you conducted your interview. Your interview has gone successfully. You've been admitted into the program. What you need to do is then, you know, submit your acceptance letter along with your signed, sorry, su submit your signed acceptance letter along with your initial deposit. Once you submit your initial deposit, you will have your seat confirmed at Vedika. Only once you've submitted your internal, in, your, your initial deposit, only once that process is over, will you have confirmed your seat. And only once you confirm your seat, will you be eligible for the scholarship process. The scholarship process will be opened up and emails will be sent to you asking you for the particular documents that I've mentioned, such as an SOP, such as a portfolio of your extracurricular achievements, such as your income tax returns. So you have to go through these steps. And most importantly, you have to confirm slash secure your seat at Vedika by paying the initial security deposit. I hope that's clear to everyone. So yeah, these are the two aspects of financial aid and of scholarships. So I hope they're clear and I hope, uh, you know, if there are any other further questions, I can perhaps address them briefly. If you want any more information, I would encourage you to just rewind and just, you know, see what I've said. And hopefully that should elaborately detail out for you what the process for financial assistance is. All right. Um, you can just, you know, I would encourage you to be as interactive as possible, ask many, many, many more questions. Uh, you know, again, right now is the best time to clarify all your doubts about Vedika. Great. So moving on to the next question, uh, Sajil asks, how will Vedika help me enter into entrepreneurship? Uh, great question, Kajal. So, you know, entrepreneurship 
especially in this day and age, requires a very multi-dimensional and holistic approach. Okay, so what that means is not only do you have to have the business acumen, but you also have to have a lot of other skill sets. And you know, one aspect is essential communication. You know, business communication. You need to know how to communicate with your employees. You need to know how to pitch. You need to know how to you know uh, talk to different stakeholders. So communication track helps you with that thoroughly. Uh, the liberal arts track allows you to get context for your management decisions. Let me give you an example of that. For example, if you go to Jamshedpur and you open a startup there for textiles or for garments, you know, not only do you have to have the technical knowledge of producing garments and where you require land, labor, capital, you also have to have an, an added dimension of knowledge, which is the sociological and political landscape of that particular geography. We see that you know it's really helped our students who have been entrepreneurs in the past. So students coming into Vedika with their own companies already existing. I remember in the fourth batch we had a student who uh, you know had her own apparel brand. In the fifth batch we have a student who has her own uh, you know food brand. So we have students like this who then use that knowledge that they're getting in the Vedika classroom. Management, you know, you can learn about corporate strategy, you can learn about financial accounting, how to maintain and, you know, keep your books. Uh, liberal arts, you know, added dimensions of, say, political science, psychology, consumer behavior, behavioral psychology, all of that. But the second thing, so the third aspect is the communicative aspect of how to pitch, you know, get more funding, you know, how to develop audience, how to communicate, is that there's an aspect of personal growth. So in an economy and in a world that is so dynamic and so, you know, it's evolving so rapidly, you need to know how to have your own. So the personal growth track really helps you out. And as you can see, you know, the combination of all of these four is a very holistic and multidisciplinary approach to entrepreneurship and business in general. Right. So I hope that answers your question. Um, great booth by Vedika for Women Empowerment. Very much excited for the journey. Hope everything goes well. Yeah, I completely agree, uh, Shubhangini. You know, uh, I was also very awestruck when I saw Vedika making these kind of moves. And again, very, very disheartened when I saw the statistics that currently exist. As I mentioned, about 24 million Indian women have withdrawn from the workforce over the last 15 to 20 years. And you'll see this, at, you know, at the age of 28, 29, 30, 32, women who get married and then you know have children are usually asked to give up on their careers uh, they're asked you know to take care of the house and it's usually the women who have to sacrifice for their career so you see this sharp decline you know all of you must have completed your graduation all of you have gone to school so you're first of all you know you're in the lucky few uh, but you see that you know perhaps you'll get to a position where you're an analyst or senior analyst or a manager but again at that age of 28 30 32 is when the of starts to go down so most importantly it's you know we're out there to inform everyone that this exists and this is happening this is a problem that you'll perhaps encounter 10 15 years later in your life but should be cognizant and aware of it now so what again at vedika what we're trying to do is help women develop sustained careers of excellence and sustained as i mentioned before is the biggest you know one of the biggest aspects that we focus on is your career is that is, you know, is, your career is something that you develop, which is long lasting and you develop an attitude of never quitting. That's where I feel, uh, you know, is central to the Vedika ethos. Right. Uh, Nupur is asking, uh, what is the average package at Vedika? So Nupur, the average package is uh, last year for the fourth batch was 10.2 lakhs uh, per annum. So uh, that's something that you can, you know, uh, I would encourage you to go to our website and have a look at the placements page. So that'll mention the average package, the highest package, the kind of companies that came to recruit, uh, the kind of rules that our scholars went to. So you'll get a complete download of all the information there. Right. Um, Deepshika has asked, uh, if I mention an internship experience in the CV, then is it okay? Yeah, I mean, so if you mention, you know, all your internship experiences, etc., in the CV, what happens is, you know, when when you have your interview, if you're selected for your interview, and when you have your interview, that CV along with the other documentation that you provided is in front of the interviewer. Uh, they have that on their screens, or they have that in front of them printed. 
so you know all of those facilities are available right um nupur is asking is the loan facility available right so nupur i had just spoken about the loans yes an education loan facility is available what you have to do is connect with our financial partners uh, as i mentioned before that there are student there are banks right now that you know are slowing down their operations because of the health pandemic that's out there but our financial partners you know know the scene they know what vedika's ethos admission placement process you know they're confident in vedika students being placed at fantastic company with fantastic salaries and developing an ability to repay them later so we have ties with access bank everyone is aware of that and then credence credence is an nbfc a non financial company uh, which will help you connect to different lend companies that you can custom their own educational product so connect with us uh, and we we'll connect you to these uh, different financial aid uh, partners of us and uh, more you know extremely easily uh, i'm sure that you can kind of uh, ease the finance burden that's there and you know adopt an educational loan to finance away the education experience right um yeah so as pointed out in the in the comments for any of you who are unable to upload your cv or your uh, you know any photograph and then just email us at info at we from we'll be able to upload it from our back end right um okay so uh, i'll move on to the second question first uh, how much is the initial deposit the initial deposit is 50 so i hope that answers your question um okay ishika is asking uh, how do i prepare for the interview so good question so as i mentioned the interview the vedika interview is a non traditional interview in which we look for potential and not performance that should be the key word here so things we're looking for is resilience your ambition your drive not necessarily you know crowning academic achievements but we want to see where and how you grow so if you can show that and convince obviously convince us of that in your interview then uh, that should be uh, satisfactory um right uh, you know also most definitely if you have any say achievement academics in extra curricular in, in or say you have your own company uh, you know these would be things that would definitely add value and definitely you know you have to be familiar with what the current business news is what the current news is around politics what the current international news is so students who are you know very keenly and you know you know regularly or checking their news apps so you have to stay on top of business and general knowledge news and second thing is an ability to you know be reading a lot whether that's non fiction whether that's journals whether that's fiction whether that's uh, you know essays or research papers we there's a lot of reading at vedika like trust me a lot of reading is required and that's a skill for life you know it's our faculty always mention it is to read indiscriminately and as much as you can so that's something i would encourage you to i mean obviously you can't develop it now but i you know we look for that in our students who have been say you know keen readers in the past who have that financial acumen business acumen and who are ready to grow uh, there are some components of logic as well you know some uh, we might ask you here and there some logical questions so you could be you know be prepared for uh, say a mixed bag when it comes to the interview right uh, shubhra was is asking what is the least package of at the campus last year so shubhra uh, you know there is a huge debate on freshers work experience whether i'll be at a disadvantage if i'm a fresher let me offer a corollary to your argument and say the highest package that was offered which was almost touching 22 lakhs last year that was offered to both a fresher and uh, someone with work experience so as you can see that companies when they come to the vedika campus they do not discriminate on the basis of how much work experience you have or you know if you have 5 years of experience or 3 years of experience so that's something i think you should be taking out of your head you should be focusing on the educational aspect you should be focusing on your learning focus on your shadow program focus on making connection with your mentors focus on making connection with your faculty and you know it's actually the network that you take back uh, it's the connections you make with your fellow scholars that you take back uh, you know i would encourage you i mean i know at the end of the day it's a management program but i would encourage all of you in the chat to approach this from a different perspective not so much as again uh, a salary and how much will i earn and 
which company will I be in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That is obviously a great byproduct, but you know um, what what there is is the actual value to be taken from is from the learnings in the classroom, is from the learnings in the hostel when you talk to your peers. Again, women are coming in from different parts of India, from different geographies, from different educational backgrounds, different professional backgrounds. Each one of them have their own story, and you know having such a diverse cohort and having you know then that really you know you you're not going to remember the 60th exam you took at vedika you're going to remember the night you stayed up till 4 am and you know had to work so hard on say a very interesting say video project that you you know during vedika so you know those are the nights i think you take back rather than uh, again a standard slew of examination however vedika examinations again are not you know standard examination i don't know if you heard but recently one of our professors uh, francis uh, professor francis rubello he takes a, a course on negotiations he had an examination in which um, you know students were writing the exam and there was loud music being played right next to their ears so that they were distracted as much as they could be uh, you know to distract them in the exam that's something that they face in real life even in their group project even in their life projects they were you know there's these non traditional methods of evaluation that i have personally never seen anywhere else uh, except at vedika and you know that's something that's very encouraging for professors to adopt a completely non traditional approach to education and see it be successful so i kind of hope that kind of goes through uh, that way um all right another question is how do i contact the alumni of vedika right so uh, nupur i would encourage you to write to us you know we can connect you to any alumni uh, in a formal channel so write to us at info@vedikascholars.com and you'll be able to connect to the alumni accordingly additionally if you just go to linkedin uh, linkedin.com you'll be able to search say vedika scholars program for women you'll see our page i encourage you to like our page and start following us on linkedin and on all social media channels everyone who's in that's not just for nupur we're on facebook on youtube on instagram on on linkedin so just you know subscribe or whatever whatever that you know just go through all that process and you'll be notified of any say new communication that's coming up and uh, it's coming back to your question how do you contact them so when you like say the vedika uh, linkedin page you see all the students that you know have used vedika on their profile and students who have been scholars there before so what you do is you you know see some students perhaps they have perhaps some students are from the same city as you or perhaps some students have studied the same undergraduate degree perhaps you know you've studied say i don't know just hypothetically say you studied engineering so you can see many other students who've studied engineering and then come to vedika you can connect with them on linkedin you can send them a uh, uh, let's send them a uh, email message and uh, i'm sure that there are uh, you know more than enough uh students uh, alumni of ours would be happy to reach out to you and connect with you on linkedin of course that's a an informal channel uh i would encourage you you know to write to us at info@vedikascholars.com we can perhaps expedite that and you know, connect you on email with an alumni within a couple of hours so if you want to do that at a, a faster rate then uh, most definitely you can reach out to us right okay moving on please explain the importance of liberal arts inclusion in the program okay sure so um yeah you probably seen many mba schools uh, you know promote the fact that there's an mba in hr mba in finance and mba in marketing so they have a mindset of being very specialized and you know being very uh, teaching students to have a very refined skill set in a, a particular area but you know when vedika was being established we had conversations with many top employers like hundreds of companies we had surveyed and talked to them and you know the answer is that the job when you know when you reach the job the on job training is actually what counts right uh companies don't require students coming in with a specialization that they'll never then again do in that company being able to solve any any problem being able to go in any direction that holistic nature that kind of uh, personality in which you can step into any shoes 
that's what's being valued so you know we saw a big emphasis from the companies end to tell us to include liberal arts and liberal art what is liberal arts at the end of the day liberal arts are courses in the arts in sciences in you know for example philosophy psychology gender studies it allows you to give you know it allows for you to get a context in your management education that you will not get studying only traditional management i hope you understand let me repeat that to take better managerial decisions for your businesses as compared to studying only a traditional business for any of you on the chat who uh, studied computer science you know that you know any algorithm is only refined when you add more data to it it can make accurate predictions it can just improve on its accuracy there so you see the more lenses more you know uh, lenses that you have in your toolkit the more tools that you have in your toolbox the better manager you become so again including liberal arts in your education in this decision as i mentioned the example before knowing the political sociological climate of a particular city you need to know you know what kind of decisions need to be taken there you can't take these blindly you know one of the biggest aspects that uh, at vedika we promulgate is the gender aspect so you know there's that's a huge thing to consider you know workforces are moving towards hiring more women workforces are recognizing the problem that vedika has been pointing out for the last 5 years that women are sharply on the decline so you see boardrooms these days they're changing from an, you know all male composition uh, all male composition to an equal representation of men and women so again that's come through liberal arts that's not come through studying management at the same way so i hope i've answered some bit of your question i know it was on a tangent but i do remember talking i uh, want to talk about what kind of classes there are so let me give you this example so uh, a liberal arts class like history for example so everyone has studied history in school and how were you taught history in school you were taught history in a particular manner you were taught it in a chronological manner what that means is 1600 1700 this is what happened 1700 to 1800 this is what happened 1800 to 1900 this is what you understand it's a sequence of time that it goes across vedika does not follow that approach vedika follows a gendered lens to education what is a gendered lens to education mean in the context of history class when you walk into the history class you see that you have uh, let's say seven lectures right so in those seven lectures you will have each lecture take you through indian history through the eyes of seven great women leaders that have been in india's history and you know throughout india's past again the difference here is not chronologically but you will be taken through india's history through the effects and the importance of seven great indian women leaders that they had in their past so not only is you know our design of our curriculum different but in the courses that you are sitting in and you know that you get uh, that are imparted to the students they have a very uh, multi dimensional and a very novel approach as compared to say any other traditional mba college or school or any other college that i particularly see so yeah <clears throat> right so how much intake uh, so i mean you know we looking for a bigger batch size this time we had about 65 students in our fifth batch uh, we are very confident about a number of student teacher ratio uh, i don't know if you've heard of this term before but you know the number of students per one faculty or per one teaching assistant we encourage everyone and you know it's a core philosophy of ours to, for that number to be as low as possible so you see many colleges in delhi in india for example being filled with thousands of students and what happens then is you roam around feeling like just another number you have your set of friends you don't really know everyone in your class much less your entire batch the professors don't know your name you have a particular id that's assigned to you i know i went through that kind of educational system and of course it doesn't allow for a personalized and customized education experience again the focus of vedika is to keep the student to teacher limit low so that professors know your name they can call you by the name when you you know you're sitting in class or you know you you know everyone in the batch and of course 18 months is a great time to know you know everyone like it's it's a perfect amount of time to spend with say everyone in different sets of groups in different sets of permutation and combination they have a low student to teacher ratio 
Right. Okay. Uh, moving ahead. Um, hi, is the security deposit uh, included in the initial deposit? Yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, it's included. Uh, we we term it as the initial deposit. I, I might have termed it as the initial deposit, but yeah, the security deposit is what's required. Uh, you know, for you to then confirm your seat at Vedika, uh, after which you can then apply for scholarships and uh, other processes. I just want to make that clear again. Once you get admission, after your you know com complete your app, application is screened, interview is done. Say your interview went well, you're selected for the program. After that, you have to submit your initial security deposit. Okay, fifty-five thousand plus GST. Once that's you know submitted. You will have confirmed and blocked your seat at Vedika. Once that's done, you will start reaping the effects of uh, you know what our acceptances are uh, currently doing. So our current cohort has, you know, they're getting these things. This program that started recently called Experience Vedika, which is different faculty that are you know directly interacting with the students who are about to join. So that's something I feel that uh, you know is a perk. Another thing is uh, an exclusive access admitted students page. So in that page, they'll have access to uh, blogs, to TED talks, to podcasts, to you know short stories, to cases, to articles, many many different academic resources. Uh, you know direct words from our dean, like a, a meet the dean virtual session. So all of those aspects are currently being like you know all those uh, rewards are currently being reaped by our uh, acceptances. So anyone who'd want to you know get into that train, get access to these resources. Please join Vedika. <clears throat> All right, uh, more questions coming in. Vedika doesn't fall under the purview of AI AICTE. Please, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, please explain this. Okay, Rakhi, in one word, no, it does not make any difference. And actually, it's a deliberate decision on our end not to go ahead with AICTE. As you see, Vedika's curriculum is designed across, uh, you know, 18 months is. Spread across 13 terms of six six weeks, like six weeks each term. So that's a very novel design for our curriculum and pedagogy. If you look at an AICT, a regular institute, it's just again, you know, a semester-wise system. So the way that we've designed our curriculum, the way that we use a visiting faculty model, and the way that we have a mentorship system design, it doesn't fall under the purview of the AICT. And honestly, we don't care. I mean, we believe that we are offering a much better educational experience. Uh, we, our faculty, you know, they only tell our students why should you let the government determine your education for you. There are thousands of MBA colleges, if not in the tens of thousands in India, that are in the purview of AICT but have, to be honestly, really shit places, right? So if you look at Vedika, some a company which is so young, uh, an educational institute which is you know started in 2015, 2016. Within the span of say five six years, uh, it's already built such a name for itself. It's already built such a reputation for itself that scholars are now moving into companies like you know McKinsey, uh, moving into companies like, um, for example, uh, you know, an academy or you know at high managerial positions across fields, whether that's you know consulting, whether that's in the corporate sector, whether that's in the de development space. Uh, our employees, you know, our scholars are in Google, for example. So, where what can you, you can't really say that for most of the other MBA colleges that exist out there. So, you honestly see what you you know what you value. Do you value uh, you know uh, at the end of the day traditional stamp from the government degree, or do you value your educational experience? Do you value your learning? Do you value your network that you develop? Honestly, if you look at business schools across the world, that's what strikes me is something that students should take away rather than something which is AICT. All right, uh, I'll just zoom through the questions. Uh, do I need to provide a CV or a concise CV? Uh, yeah, a uh, full CV will be better as written in the comments. Um, what, are, what are your views on how will this pandemic affect the CTC for the upcoming year? Right, uh, Kajal, uh, nice question. Uh, we recently had a webinar that I conducted with the CEO of Oyo Rooms, India and South Asia. And, uh, you know, they had echoed something which everyone I think should on this, on this uh, webinar should hear is that it's the best time right now to study. The entire world is on pause. So right now is the best time to invest in your education, number one. Number two, 
when you join Vedika, so I mean, if you're applying this year, you'll be joining the sixth batch. Sixth batch will be, you know, starting in 2020 and it will be ending in December 2021. That means you'll graduate and start your job from December 2022. Right? Up till then, if you look look at, for example, China, or if you look at other countries that have started opening up and started resuming their economies, economies and businesses will be on a rise again. Of course, as fast as they fell, it'll take a long time for them to rise. And most experts, economists are predicting that it'll take minimum one year, one and a half years uh, for this to happen. So, you know, you will be actually at a great position because number one, that Vedika education will offer you that holistic experience. So whether that's learning about liberal arts, whether that's learning about decision making, uh, being effective communicators, you'll have this, you know, multidisciplinary toolkit to then tackle business problems that emerge in 2021, 2022. And to be honest, businesses will need uh, students who have this multi-dimensional toolkit and who can communicate effectively. The age of specialized specialization and specialists is over. Yeah, that's all I can say. Right. Uh, so this process of admission is for the 2021 batch. Yeah. So Diksha, if you apply right now, you will be starting your program in. So we're starting uh, the batch in on in the first of September. So you'll start in the first of September accordingly. Spend uh, you know 18 months and then be graduating in December 2021, uh, Jan 2022. So that's the time. So this 18 month period will be covered. In. So yes, the admissions right now is for the 2021 batch. Okay. <clears throat> will there be any effect on the placement or average package due to COVID-19? Uh, Shivangani, yes, as I just mentioned, for the year that you're applying for, which I'm assuming which would be the sixth batch, uh, it will not. First of all, Vedika will uptake its performance. And, you know, we're it constantly committed to a promise of assured placements, not just for, you know, your batch, which will then graduate in Jan 2022, but for the current batch as well. I would say the current batch who's there on campus, the fifth batch, would be the ones that are even more affected than you. And we've promised them 100% placements. See, placements happen because of the reputation of an institute, right? If you look at IIM Ahmedabad, IIM Bangalore, they'll still have placements. It's not like they are shutting off on placements because of the health pandemic. Again, the reputation of the institute is equally as strong as an ISB. Companies are coming in and seeking quality students that they know are already there if they look up. So, you know, the network we are confident is strong enough to promise placements, not just to your batch, but obviously, you know, we'll be, come, uh, we'll be graduating in a, say, a, a rise of the businesses and in the economy. But even for this batch, that's in the brunt of the head pandemic. All right. Uh, can you share some details of the Vedika venue? All right. So uh, we're located right behind IIT Delhi. Uh, you look, you just Google us. Uh, we're located in this place called the Clarion Connection. So that's in Shaheed Jeet Singh Mart, right next to the Department of Science and Technology. Okay, hopefully that answers your question. Um, is an aptitude test part of the Vedika admissions process? Uh, no, we don't believe in an aptitude test. Uh, we do not accept CAT, GMAT, or GRE scores as well. Again, it's potential and not performance. Uh, as I mentioned several times before, uh, we have a very holistic and non-traditional method of interviewing and evaluating our candidates. So we feel that 1% here or 5%, you know, 5 marks here and there in a CAT exam that you couldn't score really should not affect you missing out on quality management education. So we kind of reject, we feel that's an antiquated system of evaluation. So we follow our own metrics and we feel that we deliver a much better a much better educational experience than many of the institutes that are out there in the country. Uh, Pranjali, uh, how do I apply for scholarship? Uh, Pranjali, again, as I mentioned, you have to three things. Number one, complete your app. Number two, you'll have to you know, go through and successfully qualify with your interview as well. So once you get that admittance, then you'll have to submit your signed acceptance letter and your initial deposit. Initial deposit is 55,000 uh, plus 18% GST. Once that deposit is with us, you will have confirmed your seat at Vedika. Once all of that is cleared, then you can write us a mail or we'll reach out to you 
with scholarship uh, requirement so excuse me uh, so yeah what you need to do is you need to submit a certain set of documents itr returns your scholarship sop your portfolio of extracurriculars or any certificates and uh, you know all that will be uh, specified in detail on the mail all right um Mikita is asking, "Hello, sir. Is the admission process for 2020 batch over? No, it's not over, Mikita. You can still apply and join the Vedika program. However, uh, we have few seats remaining. Let me just say that uh, we don't have much place left. So we'd really encourage you to complete your app as soon as possible. The faster you complete your app, the faster the admissions process will start, and the faster your evaluation will be done. We operate on a rolling admissions basis." rolling admissions basis exactly this is you know you can uh, <clears throat> you can start the faster you start the faster you complete the faster you get in and the higher chances you have of getting in right uh, if after paying in the deposit uh, if in case i will not get scholarship so will vedika return the deposit amount uh, so you know it depends on specialized cases you'll have to write to us with a specific case if it's a medical emergency or a personal emergency uh yes then vedika will return the initial deposit amount but as i said it's on a case by case basis which is again decided by the scholarship committee uh so that's uh, you will have to write uh, over a, a formal channel like email to us with the reason and uh, it'll have to be valid and accepted by the scholarship committee <clears throat> is there any telephonic interview before we are via video conferencing no what we've done is just to expedite the process we've merged it all into a video conferencing call so uh, if you if your application gets selected if you're screened then uh, we do one uh, video conferencing interview and that's an extensive interview as i mentioned it lasts often you know 45 minutes to an hour and asks you a myriad of things from you know your communication skills to your checks for your ambition and drive uh, to like current affairs general knowledge all the way to say logic so you have to come prepared um please briefly explain the scholarship process after an initial deposit uh so the scholarship process after the initial deposit as i mentioned is once you've submitted it and blocked your seat out at vedika you need to write us a mail once we receive that mail for a scholarship request we'll get back to you with the documents that are required documents are you know the scholarship sop number 2 would be your itr returns for your family number 3 would be any portfolio that you have of extracurricular activities certificates uh, you know debating certificates the entire the list of documents is mentioned in that email so you know once you get that and you have to get back to us with that within say 7 to 10 days uh, once you do that the scholarship committee sits uh, you know every one month or every two months so you know when they get those details when they get the details of those documents they'll be declaring scholarships accordingly for different students right <clears throat> uh i have talked to some people from vedika you are also full of energy and positivity and also a sense of inclusiveness it would be life changing to learn with vedika yes of course and that's full credits to the students and our alumni you know students are uh, that's where they are the best brand ambassadors for the program you know to all of you who are watching this Uh, i would really encourage you to reach out to the students who are currently studying at vedika or students who have graduated from vedika uh, you will really get to know about the you know the ins and outs of the program things that obviously i cannot explain as i am a part of the program team i'm someone who administers the program i'm someone who helps strategize the program but yeah the actual program and you know the day in and day out aspects of it will be best told to you by students and thank you for you know mentioning this comment um do do does vedika provide double exposure also in terms of job opportunity uh yes uh, you know we do provide double exposure uh, i don't know if you know we have a tie up with lester castle business school that allows for students to pursue a global mba or any other masters from uh, lester castle business school so yes uh, you know students have continued to stay on in london for example work on a live action project get some global perspective there second of all our shadow women leader program you know that's been a national initiative so in the fourth batch i remember a student of ours went to uh, johannesburg students before have gone uh, also johannesburg in germany so you know to do their shadow experiences uh, before students of ours have gone to london to say shadow the women in the shadow women leader module 
they've gone and done their shadow module with the ceo of deloitte in london so you know that's the global exposure that vedika gives you. the shadow women leader program uh, for all who you don't know you know coca cola has a shadow program isb has a shadow program coca cola's program is for one day uh, isb's program is for about a week and vedika's program is for six weeks as i mentioned uh, you know there's a severe lack of women leadership because so many women are quitting the workforce so we saw extra interest from the women leaders that currently exist in wanting to mentor the future women leaders of tomorrow the shadow women leader program is perhaps one of the biggest and you know most unique aspects of vedika that you know it's it's one of the most unique aspects and it permeates throughout the world there's no other program like the shadow women leader program at vedika across the world that's that can be testified by all of our you know program team members our dean our shadow mentors clearly visible there so can i apply tomorrow yeah uh, i would encourage you to apply as fast as possible if not today uh, if not now then tomorrow is a good time so please do get your application in uh, sir i registered for the same but then i didn't receive my username and password which i was supposed to get via email uh, how long have you waited you know it usually takes 15 to 20 minutes uh, okay there's another uh, comment uh, from our end so we've just sent you the application login details you can check your email right now uh, use these details log into the application form uh, get straight on to your application complete it as soon as possible as i mentioned we have limited seats remaining as i mentioned uh, we have a rolling uh, rolling admissions process uh, going on uh, okay it's been, so make it i would say that you know perhaps is a glitch on our back end i would encourage you that i think our we've sent out the login details to you again complete your app as soon as possible and uh, you know get cracking with completing it and then perhaps if it's screened we'll conduct your interview and uh, then perhaps we can uh, you know get you into the batch and going you know go forward from there as i mentioned just want to you know uh, say this again it's a rolling admissions process so the faster you apply the better it is once more the faster you apply the better it will be for your chances there are limited seats remaining so everyone who's in this uh, webinar right now or perhaps your friends uh, you know who've not started their application we really encourage you to start it as soon as possible okay uh, will you provide scholarship to everyone uh, no i don't think that's the case uh, scholarships are provided on again as i said a need merit and diversity basis and approximately 30 to 35% of the class gets scholarship uh, i hope that clears your doubts how many members are part of the interview panel are they the teachers of the program so we have uh, either one to two members uh, these days it's quite uh, singular uh, because of the pandemic but you know usually you know in our, in, our uh, in person interviews we used to have a panel of about two to three members um, and uh, yeah so you know sometimes they are program team members they members of senior leadership for example the admissions director for example our dean also takes interviews uh a senior advisors to the program take interview so it's the senior levels of leadership that take the interview and who can best ascertain if you're a fit for the program or not i don't know if you know we have a visiting faculty model so yeah to be more genuine in the interview process would that be fruitful to take the interview in hin english nice i have not heard of this term before hin english it's a learning for me as well uh so the medium of instruction is in english in vedika and uh, it's not just the medium of instruction but the readings are also given in english and the readings are quite dense so if you are studying about philosophy of the mind it's difficult to grasp if you don't have a good comprehension of, of english so i would encourage you to brush up your comprehensive and diction and uh, vocabulary skills and uh, then you know be a part of the vedika interview process although we don't discriminate against anyone who can't speak it effectively that's why the vedika writing and communication center exists that's why we have tie ups and you know tutors who help students with just this to improve their communication skills across 18 months so don't be you know don't be uh, you know disheartened because your english skills are not perfect uh, if you definitely want to you can speak in some bits in hindi but please be mind that the the you know the medium of instruction vedic and all the readings that are imparted are in english right um I had the same problem. I clicked on the okay. Yeah, uh, Fajal has found solution for everyone who's not 
uh, who has not received their details, you can click on forgot password and you'll receive your uh, login details. Sometimes there's a glitch in the back end. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, a lot of applications that we've been getting over the last, say, month, month and a half. So, uh, you know, sometimes the back end gets slow and does not, or in, you know, successfully, unsuccessfully delivers, um, cannot deliver uh, in your, you know, login details. So this is a good hack for it. Thank you, Kajit. Right. So, um, Franji's asked, Shadow, a woman CEO program is of six weeks. Is it included in the 18 months program? Or Franjali, first of all, it's called the Shadow of Women Leader Program. And it's not just uh, pertinent to CEOs, it's for any CXO level woman, uh, whether that's CEOs, CFOs, CHROs. Uh, so we keep it more inclusive than that. And yes, it's included in the part of the 18 months. It actually, after you complete 12 months, then you have your Shadow program, and then come the remainder of the, say, you know, uh, five, four, five months that are there. Right. Uh, Diksha means, um, uh, sir, this means if I submit my application form now, then our classes will start from September. Uh, yeah, so if you submit your application form now, then you'll be, you know, call it, then you'll be screened. Then you'll get to an interview. Then after you get qualified interview, then you'll be accepted. Once you're accepted, you have to block your seat by paying your initial deposit at Vedika. Then you'll be confirmed as a Vedika scholar who has a seat. Yes, and for you, then the classes will start from September. So it's not from you know just submitting the application form. It's a bigger process than that. When will the session for 2021 begin? Any particular date? Uh, yeah. So as I mentioned in the uh, before, it's uh, first September is when we're planning to start. Uh, you earlier in the earlier we usually started from August, but uh, we pushed it back to September given the health pandemic. Uh, and again. We're not AICT affiliated, so we have the flexibility to modify the timelines of our program to make sure that your learning experience is not compromised. Again, that's something that's absolutely essential for us is that your learning experience stays as holistic and as true as possible. And as you know, that's something we cannot compromise on our quality over there. So we make sure that uh, that's uh, a focus of the program. OK. Um, uh, fees is too high. What to do? Please help. Uh, I mean, if you look at programs like IIM Ahmedabad, who are charging 25 lakhs for two years. If you look like I look at programs like ISB, which charges almost 40 lakhs for uh, a year. Unfortunately, you know, we also have a program to run. We employ some of the best faculty in the world from institutes like Harvard, Stanford, Yale, MIT, Princeton, even companies like McKinsey, Coca-Cola. So, you know to incur such faculty costs, to have international shadow experiences, we have a cost on ourselves. As I mentioned if, uh, before, if you feel the fees is too high, we encourage you to take an educational loan. So educational loans you can take with our financial partners. And uh, you know we, they can easily facilitate you borrowing a certain amount of money to ease the financial pressure on you. And uh, as I mentioned before, the return on investment is greater than 100%. So, you know, that's more than enough for you to then go for the program, knowing that you'll be earning more than what you're spending per annum. All right. Um, does Vidika have any alumni from a CA background? Uh, CA, can you just, uh, like a starter currency, uh, or is that computer application? Uh, you can let us know. I'm, I'm not sure, Kajal. If, the, if till September COVID-19 issue is not resolved, how will you conduct classes? Uh, you know, we are actually dying to get to class, but we have to you know, follow government sanctions. So it's not us that's limiting the students not coming from class, it's actually the government. And you know, it depends on us uh, if, you know, we, uh, and then start the program. So if it's more pertinent for students who have taken admission, uh, we'll let them know what we're doing and we are quite sure that their educational quality and the quality of their Vedika experience will stay uncompromised. OK, does Urvashi Butalia teach? Yeah, uh, as uh, you know, we've put in the chat, she teaches uh, women's society and changing India. Uh, uh, it's a very, very popular course. Uh, and again, Urvashi is one of the, you know, it's uh, always a privilege to be you know, talking to her, to be in her classes, and one of the leading feminists in the Indian feminist movement. So again, uh, she's, it's a life-changing experience to be in, in her class for sure. Right. Um, chartered accountancy. 
Uh, all right. So, uh, Kajal, why don't you write to us at info at vedikascholars.com. We'll connect you with someone who has a, uh, a background in, in this in a CA. Uh, if, if they don't, then, uh, you know, we'll let you know uh, who you can connect with, who has a relevant background in finance. Okay, uh, Anjali, how many semesters are there? As we mentioned, we don't have a semester-based system. It's not affiliated to AICT. If you go to our website, have a look there, I would encourage you to do that first. Uh, you'll see we have 13 terms, uh, and each term is six weeks long. So we follow a very non-traditional model of education by design. All right. Um, so starting, uh, do we have to pay 5,000 plus GST? That could be done through educational loan, or do we have to pay by our own side? An educational loan applies after that. That's up to you, Sabia. Like, you know, if you want to take a loan amount that covers this uh, initial deposit, you can go ahead and do that. And, uh, you know, the initial deposit will be made uh, from their end, and then your loan will look, begin from that period onwards. Um, Shraddha's asking the science students. Yeah, science students can apply for this. There's no bar. All right. What that means is you can be from English literature, you can be from zoology, from botany. You can be from engineering, you can be from architecture. You know, we have no restrictions on what undergraduate profession, on undergraduate degree that you have. You can apply to Vedika. Right. Uh, Shwangni is asking, please give me some tips on how to prepare for the interview process. Right. As I mentioned before, I would encourage you to actually rewind the webinar and go towards the start. I'm, I'm speaking about the interview at depth here. I'll just give you a couple of pointers to perhaps leave you with and then end the, end the webinar. Um, so I would encourage you, first of all, to be familiar with the, the business news that's going on, you know, news of uh, international relevance and national relevance. That's really important. Number two would be to be very, very thorough with what you've written in your application and be able to expand upon the points there. For example, the internships uh, or work experience or your educational experience, be ready to talk about them at depth. Uh, and lastly, we check for aspects like resilience, your ambition, your drive, your motivation, why you want to do this program, why you want to succeed in life. So, you know, these are things, of course, that you can't prepare that are there already within a student. So these are things that we're checking for and that, you know, we will, our interviewers will get to know as and when they talk to you. So I would encourage you to keep these three, four things in mind. Uh, as always, you can just rewind and see what I've uh, spoken about. Uh, earlier on. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yes, we. Have, I think this is uh, for Kajal. Kajal, we have someone who has done a CA CFA. I think it's Samapika. Samapika. Okay. Yeah. Samapika from our fourth batch. Great. So you can connect with her on LinkedIn. You can write to us. We can connect you with her. Whatever you see fit. All right, that was a lot of speaking. That was a lot of questions. Uh, my throat is hurting right now, so I'm going to sign off soon. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining this webinar. As I mentioned before, we are closing our round four admissions soon. I, I don't think I mentioned this before. We are closing our round four admissions by the end of this month, right? So please stay tuned to our communication of you know what the final deadline is for round four. Everyone who's not applied. You know, if you want your friends to apply, if you want to tell, you know, other women to apply, please tell them to apply as soon as possible. Please tell them that it's a rolling admissions process, which means the faster you apply, the higher chances you have of getting in. Lastly, you, you know, uh, it's a multidimensional program with a four track kind of approach. So we're looking at creating professionals that can handle any sort of corporate or any sort of uh, professional scenario, whether that be corporate sector, development sector, social sector, or even the creative sector. Honestly, Vedika is a life-changing experience. We encourage you to reach out to our alumni, our current students, see what their experiences have been, talk to them about the program. I'm sure they'll have great things to say. If they don't, then let me know. I'll talk to them, or you can talk to me. But yeah, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, this has been educational. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, hope everyone is staying safe, staying healthy, and uh, staying indoors. I hope uh, all of you have a good Friday, Saturday, Sunday coming up ahead. I'll see you soon. Oh, yes, this webinar will be uh, available. It'll be you know it'll directly be uploaded to YouTube after I'm done. Literally, like the second I press end stream, it'll just go up on the YouTube channel. Okay. Anyway, thank you.